So it's true. I got myself a Steam Deck again. <laughs> and the back and forth continues. Now nah, this one is gonna stick, I swear. No, I, I got myself a Steam Deck, but I also got the Asus ROG Ally X. I can't really keep that over there right now. Because I wanted to see what is going on between the two, which one really is gonna give me the better experience. Because on one hand, you have the ease of use with something like the Steam Deck, but on the other hand, you have the power and flexibility of something like the Asus ROG Ally. Asus ROG Ally? Asus ROG Ally X. Not the regular, but X. So I want to tell you about what I've kind of figured out in the past 10 days, but I'm going to grind my coffee. I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling uh, pretty nostalgic right now, so we're sticking with the uh, Atomic Purple. Atomic Purple is, I mean, absolutely the correct color that we have for everything, and the AeroPress has Atomic Purple, which is so <laughs> exciting. This is just one of my favorite things, but we're going to do AeroPress today because I like AeroPress, and I've already had some coffee, so I want to just have a little bit. Asus ROG Ally X for me was an intriguing proposition because I'm someone who has been kind of singing the praises of the Steam Deck for the past, I guess, half a year? Being a deck daddy, self-proclaimed deck daddy. Oh gosh, it's almost been a year now, but being a self-proclaimed deck daddy, and you may be a deck daddy too, it's kind of been the big like thing. Like the Steam Deck is just so user friendly. It is such a good introduction into PC gaming. And for me, the Steam Deck, I, I can I can definitely credit it for my newfound um, intrigue as well as my current expedition into PC gaming. Something I never thought I would even try to explore. And I've gone back and forth about it. The reason why it was such a back and forth before was because <clears throat> I didn't understand how my brain and decision making worked. Before it was very much so an identity thing. It was kind of all or nothing. And now I'm like, oh, I don't have to make gaming my identity. Part of the reason why it was so hard for me to stick with one topic is because I liked so many things. And in liking so many things, I thought, oh man, when I start to do PC stuff, that means that I am basically PC, but I am actually Nintendo, when in reality, I'm neither of those things. I am, my name is JD, JD Coffee, and I like playing video games. It certainly doesn't matter what I'm on. So my new exploration, my newfound excitement, my repurchasing of the Steam Deck and now the Asus ROG Ally X, for me has a very different connotation than it did before. Right now it's truly, um, an exploration into which is going to offer the best gaming experience because both have some pretty huge pluses and both have some massive cons. So let's start with the pluses. The plus, um, first and foremost, uh, I got the ROG Ally X first before I got a Steam Deck again. The ROG Ally X is the ROG Ally X, one terabyte, display I believe seven inches LCD and the OLED display that I purchased this time around was actually the one terabyte as well with the anti-glare and it has some fingerprints on it which is fine whatever who cares this model is not the one that I exited my Steam Deck usage with I exited my Steam Deck gaming with the 512 model and the one terabyte one is nice. I have enough space to play all the games I wanna play and keep them all there, but I also have a one terabyte card in there, so that's great. First, performance-wise, I was blown away by my experience with the ROG Ally X. You see, I had purchased it first. I got the ROG Ally X before I got the Steam Deck again, and so I was starting to put games back onto my portable PC. The ROG Ally X in its nature was so, uh, impressive. I could play some of the games that I was genuinely struggling to play when I was using it on the Steam Deck back when I had a Steam Deck. I was playing the Final Fantasy 16 demo and I was like, holy smokes, this is actually running okay. I was playing some other games like Final Fantasy 15, games that historically just don't port the best to PC. And because of that, when it comes to Steam Deck, it's just not the best experience overall. 
And that's the biggest thing when it comes to the Steam Deck I'm noticing is that PC gaming is already somewhat challenging in its own right. We're gonna go for smoke again. Um, PC gaming is already somewhat challenging to have the addition of the kind of restrictions that it are, are put in place with the Steam Deck, I feel like makes things more challenging um, for some of these games to run. And so when I was using the ROG Ally X, I was like, well, I'm not using a portable Linux device. I'm using like a portable PC. This has Windows on it. A con that I would say greatly exists on the ROG Ally X, but again, we're not there quite yet. The performance itself was, uh, I, I guess anything shy of mind blowing. Like it genuinely was like, oh, this is really cool. Now the 120 frame refresh rate was was great and all, but like genuinely I was like, this is just more powerful. I was playing games, they looked better, they ran better, just overall it was better. Until I started to run into some update issues, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Then I got the Steam Deck back. And the Steam Deck, uh, the games aren't, if you go side by side, they're not running as well as they would on the actual ROG Ally itself. But here's where things kind of take a turn. So while the power itself of the Steam Deck OLED is not as much as the power of the ROG Ally X, the Steam Deck OLED also has a lower screen resolution, but in having a lower screen resolution, it also has an OLED display. So resolution smaller, vibrancy higher, resolution less demanding, colors more impressive, HDR when enabled a little bit more immersive. That in tandem actually lent itself to what I thought was a somewhat better visual experience. And since the demands of the game itself were actually less because the resolution was set lower and the frames, I guess, I mean, you can lock it wherever you want, but if you want with a 90 Hertz display versus 120, you lock it at half at 45 versus 60. And again, you're getting somewhat a more stable experience. Now, I'm gonna be the first to say that they're just not gonna run as well. Some of it on paper, it won't run as well. And some of, some of it visually, you'll notice, oh, this is definitely not hitting the frames that you'll hit with something like the Asus ROG Ally X over the Steam Deck OLED. But again, when getting the Asus ROG Ally X, I realized that it was just brute forcing some of that experience, which was impressive to me, genuinely impressive to me. My gosh, dude. The AeroPress is just such a great little, ooh, it's clean too. Like that is, that is a clean cup. There's no astringency. Oh, wow. So yes, the power, not as powerful, but somehow it tricks you into thinking that you're getting a better experience. Now let's get into the battery life because that's something that I found to be fascinating. I had the original Steam Deck. I had the Steam Deck LCD. With the Steam Deck LCD, I was genuinely disappointed by the battery life. It was very challenging to deal with. I personally was finding myself having issues just getting through games because I'm like, dude, I have to make sure this thing gets plugged in at the end of my day or else it's over. I'm not gonna be able to play my games again next time. With the OLED, that was less of a thing. I still felt it a little bit, but not at all at the same level as the LCD experience. And with the Ally X, it has been a completely different story. I genuinely am like, I need to remember that it gets plugged in, but I'm still at 30, 40% battery life, and it's been like four days of me using this intermittently. Like, this is crazy to me. And so the battery life in the Ally X is definitely impressive. But let's talk about lifestyle for a second, because that's huge. The nature of my gaming is 30 to 45 minutes in a location that's somewhat flexible, right? I'm gonna throw my house, although I'm in bed, on the couch, kids are napping, I can get a few minutes in. And if I'm not playing plugged into a dock on my TV, then it is in that handheld form factor, but I'm not playing for two, three, four hours at a time. Maybe if I travel, but that is few and far between. And maybe if I'm out and about and I've planned my gaming session to be out at a coffee shop because I have some time to myself, which again is very rare. I have such 
little time, right? I got a comment the other day that said, this is the, this is what you get when you have too much time on your hands, which I thought was so interesting. The accusation towards me was that I have too much time on my hands. It's, uh, it's fascinating what happens, uh, how people perceive you, right? But it was, it was interesting. I can admittedly say I don't have too much time on my hands. I wish I had more, but that being said, the gaming outside and about like the battery life, I, I genuinely wouldn't need more than two hours. I'd be lucky to get more than that one sitting. And so the battery, while it's impressive, is not necessarily changing my experience all that much. The price point is aggressive, but I feel like people who are getting into this are kind of ready to pay the price of some of these devices. Granted, the ROG Ally X is $800. It doesn't come with a case. That is kind of obnoxious, I would say. I mean, I think that the other ones do. I mean, certainly the Steam Deck does. It's a good case at that, especially this one. It has multiple layers to it. That's nice. But you do have to actually spend the extra money for that. And um, I have some cases coming in, Skull & Co, and I would highly recommend their products, but we won't talk about that until they get them in the library. And so that's my comparison of the benefits of one or the other, the things that they've done to make them better. Let's talk about the drawbacks because the drawbacks themselves are the ones that really get in the way and make one a clear winner over the other for people who find these drawbacks to be exceptionally grave. Interesting choice of words, JD. Cheers to myself for coming up with a weird sentence. This is, this is, this is a phenomenal cup of coffee, by the way. It's just phenomenal. Oh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm genuinely enjoying it. I wasn't expecting to want to have the whole cup, but here we are. I'm going to have the whole cup. Number one drawback I would say about the Steam Deck OLED, which I think is a very big one, is compatibility. You are going to run into compatibility issues, whether it's games that require anti-cheat, whether it's games that you want to get from other services like Xbox or Epic, all of these things are not as easily accessible. And I say it that way because there are people that certainly still do it. You can do everything. I mean, at the end of the day, this is still a PC and people still install Windows on it to show you you can. It's not the best experience, but people still do it. And so I'm still gonna say that one of the biggest drawbacks is that the complexity in which um, installing some of these things is, is a drawback. I think that for some people who do have um, extensive libraries that have been across multiple launchers who are a fan of Xbox's P or PC Game Pass or whatever will find themselves maybe hitting a wall that is somewhat frustrating. Now, Steam is by and large one of, if not the largest and most robust launchers that I've started to um, come in contact with. I am not well versed in the PC world, so excuse me if I um, don't have all of my facts. If you find there to be a better one out there, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm simply speaking from experience here, but like Steam does everything I need it to do. So it wasn't an issue and still isn't an issue for me, but I will say it can be. Another drawback to something like the Steam Deck OLED would be the power. It is not that powerful. It is a few years old as far as the CPU is concerned. And when it comes to its way of doing things and the power that it has on hand, while it's impressive what it can do, it still is a less powerful machine in a lot of ways. I think in most aspects, it actually is inferior on paper than something like the Asus ROG Ally X. Even the Asus ROG Ally Extreme, Z1 Extreme, or the Lenovo Legion Go, or even the MSI Claw. The Steam Deck is, I think, the least powerful out of all of them, which is interesting. And I'm only using those four because I feel like those four are the mainstream ones. I know others exist, and I always say that because someone's gonna be like, oh, RIP one player or whatever, but, or I and Neo, but like, I arguably think that the Steam Deck and the Asus ROG Ally X are the two best in their field. Steam Deck being in a class of its own as a Steam launcher, though it can do more, and the ROG Ally X being the 
portable PC with Windows, I think these are the like top choices in both categories. Now let's go to the biggest drawbacks of the Asus ROG Ally X. Big enough to where I would actually still choose the Steam Deck over the ROG Ally X in most cases. One of the biggest drawbacks has been hit over and over again, and that is just Windows. Windows 11 is not a good experience. Some people say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I don't know what people are complaining about. Though some people are the minority, I believe, based on what I'm seeing in this space. Windows in handheld fashion just isn't enjoyable. And while launchers and navigation isn't the reason why you have these things, it still is the unfortunate reality. You have to interact with Windows. You have to figure out how different things work. And you're going to have to do the updates in ways that are a little bit more manual than the automatic, carefree, almost Apple-like experience you get with the Steam Deck. And for someone like myself who is not well-versed with Windows, very new to this, who is technologically competent, but still having to learn a new style and way of doing things and understand that my life, as far as using computers is concerned, has been spoon fed to me. Mac OS makes all the decisions for you and the things that you want to do, you pretty much have to ask it first whether it can be done. While Windows, they have an array of things you can do, but you pretty much can do whatever you want. And if you can't in the moment, then you tell it how to do it and then you can do it. With these two experiences, I think for the most part, those still follow suit. With the Steam Deck, it tells you what it can do. With the ROG Ally X, you tell it what you want it to do. And in most cases, it will do it well or okay. I think one of the best things that I heard in comparison between the two was from my buddy Sandops. He simply put that the Steam Deck is a gaming device that can do PC things, while the Asus ROG Ally X is a handheld PC that can do gaming things. And that, my friends, I think is the best comparison between the two. You can do a lot more on the win on the uh, Asus ROG Ally X, and it is more capable. But I think that the capabilities of it are simply there because in order to run Windows, you need to be more capable. It's not running Android, it's running a full operating system that is uh, able to do anything from play games to uh, Excel which I don't know why you would want to do Excel. Now there are people that are like, oh yeah, I do some work things on my Asus ROG Ally X and you can do this, that, and the other, install the drivers, and some people have even edited videos on it. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be like, oh, you can make this your personal PC, no. But something that is very interesting and I'm very interested in is seeing, can the Asus ROG Ally X be the gaming PC that you want it to be? purchasing the Asus ROG Ally X for $700 or $800, and then going on to purchase an eGPU or a graphics card and plugging it into a docking station or a docking bay and plugging that graphics card into your Asus ROG Ally X and then using the power from the graphics card that ROG Ally X plugged into power as well as using a monitor to see if you can actually get a PC experience, the true desktop experience that you would get with buying your own rig. How viable is it? Is it actually something that is doable, workable, and daily drivable, really, as a gaming solution? Because I certainly don't think that as a general everyday use situation, it would be desirable. I mean, I ran into so many issues when it came to game crashes and weird graphical anomalies, trying to get in, get out. I had to force restart it multiple times. The Asus ROG Ally X is, as I said, impressive. It is so impressive. I think it is such a cool machine. It just is complex in its way of doing things. And that complexity, when it comes to the idea of handheld gaming and flexibility with your gaming, creates a kind of experience that feels convoluted in some ways. Now, is it cool? I got free a free few months of Game Pass, or maybe it was a dollar. Um, is it cool that I can play some of my 
some games I've never played, like Gears of War and stuff like that that are just in there with Game Pass. Yeah, that's really cool. Is it worth the extra $150 over something like the top tier uh, Steam Deck? It's a tough one, man. It really is. I think for me and the way that I play, the Steam Deck does the job right now. But I'm not gonna lie to you. It does the job because I know that I am building a actual gaming rig for when I eventually transition away from purchasing my games on the traditional consoles like PlayStation and Xbox. And my reason for that is just because I don't want my libraries to be on those machines anymore. They are more practical in a lot of ways, but I don't want to have to keep upgrading and buying those machines as well as have a computer. I'd rather use my Steam Deck because my Steam Deck is my primary way of gaming and in the off chance I want to sit down at a desk and enjoy more gaming because I don't game in my living room on my, P on my TV, then I would use my PC. And that is kind of the way I see it. Again, my primary way of gaming is Steam Deck or Asus ROG Ally X, Switch even. That is my primary way of gaming. And so for someone like myself, you know, the Steam Deck right now is great, but I have the knowledge that I also have a gaming PC laptop that I've been using, or gaming laptop PC, or laptop gaming PC, however you wanna say it. And so I do have the flexibility there. Would I say the Steam Deck is the way to go if I didn't have more power on hand? I don't know. I don't know. Because part of the reason why the Steam Deck got sold in the first place was because I was feeling a little bit of that pressure or that constraint when wanting to play games that required a little bit more power, such as Final Fantasy 16 or Seven Rebirth, which isn't out on Steam yet. Genuinely, when I was looking at selling my Steam Deck, I played games that I could play on my PlayStation that looked great, and I tried playing them on the Steam Deck and they didn't play well, and that helped me convince myself that I wanted to sell it. And then once I sold it, I realized that the Steam Deck is far more to me than a Final Fantasy 16 device. Currently playing Sea of Stars on it, and I'm having a blast. Highly recommend that game. Let me know what you think though. I'm curious your thoughts on this. This is a kind of a crazy thing, more deep diving here and there. And if you wanna join me on Twitch playing games on these devices, Monday through Friday, except for Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time is when I am on there streaming. The month of October, we're gonna have some fun with the Chromatic, the Mod Retro Chromatic and showcase that on streams. But go ahead and follow over on Twitch. All right, I'm gonna finish this cup of coffee, edit this up, and I will see you guys again tomorrow. But as always, play more and be kind.